This is my battery bank of 100 amp hour cal lithium iron phosphate cells. This is a Midnight Solar Whizbang Junior that counts amps going in and out of a battery. This battery bank is run in series. The first cell is connected negative to positive with the second cell. Second cell is negative to positive with the third cell and so forth until you get to 16 cells. With the Whizbang Junior you have to connect it to your battery bank on the negative side. This is the negative side of my battery. So on this battery, this is the positive, and this is the negative. For the Whizbang Junior to read correctly, all the amp hours that go in and out, it needs to be connected on the negative side. So here's a 2 watt cable on the negative side that goes all the way up to the Whizbang Junior, to the shunt, and then it goes the other side of this shunt all the way over, which is this black 2 watt cable, to the negative side of my outback inverter. The cable that goes to the negative side of your battery is connected to the side of the shunt that has the whiz bang violet wire that goes up to your charge controller. The other side of this shunt is going to be your 2 watt cable that goes to your inverter and the cable that goes to your charge controller. The positive side of your charge controller inputs is here on the positive side of the battery along with your positive side of the inverter cable. On the inside of the midnight solar charge controller you got a bunch of connectors. This one's going to be for your network this is going to be your USB to upgrade the firmware. This cable is going to be for your battery temperature sensor. These are all going to be your PV input and your battery output. Here's your ground. And right here you have an AUX1 positive, AUX1 negative, AUX2 positive, and AUX2 negative. The violet wire is going to be placed on the AUX2 positive terminal, which is the one all the way to the left. On the main screen of the charge controller, you can see the batteries are in float. Battery is at 100% with 20 amps coming in from the solar, which is because I have a space heater running. In order to program this, all you have to do is hit your main button. Hit your main button, cycle over to AUX, enter. On AUX2, you can uh, set it, if it's set for manual off, whatnot, you just cycle up. Use your up or down arrows to cycle between them. Whizbang Junior. Hit the enter. Hit your main button to get out of there. And hit status. From this screen, in order to get to the Whizbang Junior page, all you have to do is hit your status button three times. One, two, three. It'll tell you Whizbang Junior, measuring the shunt. 25 degrees is my battery bank. Remaining amp hours is 100 amp hours. My state of charge is 100%. This right here shows a negative of about a half an amp, which means that the battery is actually discharging by half an amp, meaning that my load of the space heater versus what's coming in from the solar has a difference of about a half an amp. And this jumps around as float tries to maintain the state of charge, so it'll jump up and uh, fall automatically. Setting up the local op is quite easy. So you can get your Whizbang Junior that shows what's coming in and going out of the battery, plus your state of charge. All you have to do is go here to your configure, click on that, go to your tech, 
on the bottom. Ending amps. In my case, I want 0.05C, so 5 amps. And you're going to tell it to use the Wizbang Junior for end amps. So you click that button right there to highlight it. Then you'd click this to write it to the charge controller. Cycle down from that same menu to get to your features. And then you could click this button to reset the net amp hours on a 100% state of charge. So when it goes to float, it automatically resets to 100% state of charge. And that's it. That's all there is. Go back there. You see your system. I have a space heater on. So it's taking a thousand watts. 19 amps. And yet the battery is only seeing a draw of about 0.3 amps here in float. For lithium iron phosphate cells, it needs an ending amp of 0.05C. So for my 100 amp hour cells, that's going to be 5 amps. So what I would do is I'd press the main menu, I'd get to the charge function over here, hit enter, and I would go over to advanced, hit enter, then now I have ending amps. It's using the shunt to measure the ending amps and I place it here at 5 amps. The beauty of the Wizbang Junior is that because all the loads are on the other side of the shunt, it knows exactly what's coming in and going out of the battery. Which means that when it reads your loads, it's figuring out exactly what the inverter is using, even on standby. It's using, uh, figures out what it, the charge controller is using, even on standby in addition to any loads that are coming out of the battery, which allows it to have an accurate reading so you can get a precise ending amps rather than, in my case before, before I had the Wizbang Junior, and in order to get five ending amps that the battery actually saw, I would have to compensate by adding a couple amps in order to cover any background loads. So in my case before, what I did would be to set it up for ending amps of eight amps. That way, when it dropped down to 8 amps, the battery actually saw 5 amps, thus didn't overcharge. In this case, with the Wizbang Junior, you can set it more precisely. I'm going to demonstrate the Wizbang Junior going into float. Right now you see it's got a background load of 1100 watts. What you can do, what we're going to do is I'm going to hit main menu. I'm going to go all the way over here to tweaks, hit enter. Get up to more, go over to bulk, and I'm going to force it to go back into the bulk charge cycle. So I pushed up and said, OK, hit the enter, then I go back to main menu, hit the thing. What it's doing here is, is now it's put it back up into bulk, and it's set for 55 volts, and you can see it by hitting here, 12 amps is going into the battery even though 30 amps is coming in. This is covering the background loads of the space heater while the 12 amps is what's hitting the battery. We're now below 5 amps so in a minute it will switch over to float without overcharging the batteries. Finally switched over to float and before, while the voltage drops to your float voltage, it's going to show negative amps to take off the surface charge. And once it reaches your float voltage, it'll compensate and zero out.